UCLA has arrived on site and they'll be coming momentarily. Thank you.
morning media. We are now joined by UCLA coach Corey Close. Welcome to the Eastern Time Zone. <laughs> and we'll start with questions. Thank you. Right here, first. Ben Bolt, Los Angeles Times. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, you have a very welcoming, sunny disposition. In fact, we heard you coming down the hallway here. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you attribute that to? Uh, what are the roots of that? Why is that important to you? And do you feel like it rubs off on your team? Well, uh, I don't know. I think it's more for my protection of my own heart. But I just, you know, believe that gratitude is a really big deal. And uh, I just think I have... Um, you know, I, th I think if you want things to be great in your life, be thankful for more. And I just think that uh, I have so much to be thankful for. So I think it's rooted in um, I feel like I've received much more than I deserve. And I'm living something that is I, that I love, that I get to compete with purpose and, and, and impact people's hearts in the process. So I don't have a lot to complain about. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg. Dave, Dave, Hi, Doug. Nice to see you. Um, two part question. First one is you see the four teams that are in this little region here, and obviously you're only playing one, but you see the bigger picture, I'm sure, of like how I do. good it is for women's basketball having this group here, and then microcosm-wise, the team you're playing next, LSU, just your thoughts on them. Well, I think just it's it's not even the four teams as much as it is that been the entire tournament. I you know this is my 31st year of Division One coaching, and I've never seen a bracket that had more competitive second, first and second round games. Um, you know, just across the board. Obviously, being in this one, uh, this particular region has a star-studded cast, uh, ones that we're very familiar with. Um, but that are uh, growing basketball nationally in their towns, um, even globally. Uh, so it's just an honor uh, to be a part of uh, such a group of people that are um, changing something that will be a legacy long past this tournament. Uh, obviously with LSU, um, you know, that Kim Mulkey is a proven winner. She's done a great job wherever she's been from uh, a winning championships perspective. Um, we couldn't be any more opposite in terms of our uh, the way we approach the game, but we both, we two are probably the two best rebounding teams in the entire tournament. So I think honestly, the game will come in large part down to that. Um, but, you know, I, I really respect um, the job that Kim has done. Um, obviously, they winning the national championship last year, uh, much respect. Um, but we're not playing that team, and, and we're not playing individual rosters. The best team, I think, the most connected team, uh, the most purposeful team, the most aggressive team, uh, it, they're going to win. And I don't care what the letters are across the front of your chest. Um, it, it's just going to be a matter of uh, who does it together. Hey, Corey. Howard Magdal. Hello, here. Howard. Good to see you. Uh, two, if I could, on, on the specifics of the game uh, coming up. The first, obviously, you talked about different ways of getting there. Pace seems to be a major differentiator. How do you go about emphasizing that to your team? How important is that? And just a, another one on the individual. Well, you know, um, I don't know what their pace of play is. I know they're most effective, which is different than some other teams that I've seen uh, of past LSU teams or past Baylor teams, um, they're, they definitely are their most effective um, when they're able to uh, attack in transition. Uh, you know, it's, I think uh, the analytics said it was 22% of their scoring possessions. It's a high percentage. So obviously a big emphasis for us is uh, transition D, but the most, the best transition D you can have is to be really efficient offensively. And so for us to control the offensive glass, to get really high quality, predictable shots, um, those are going to be important things in terms of controlling the pace. I think both of us are really comfortable, um, you know, playing fast. Um, I think for us, um, we use it offensively to be able to, um, you know, get the ball to Lauren Betts before double teams happen. So from an offensive perspective, um, I think, you know, they use it, um, you know, before we can pack the paint and really control that. And so it's a little bit, you know, a little bit different. And they attack it more off the bounce and versatility that way. Um, but, you know, I think pace of play, maybe not um, as important as uh, being able to play to your team's identity. Just related to that, and, and you talked a little bit about it in your answer, but just Lauren being somebody who you try to get 
transition opportunities. How much is there overlap with the way, say, South Carolina uses Camilla Cardozo against LSU? Are there ways that you can learn from that, even though I Absolutely. know you are differently? Yeah, you know, I think we really have a lot of a lot more similarities between us and South Carolina this year than um, in previous years. Uh, but I think that, yes, I mean, I've watched both those games and, you know, seeing how they were able to um, move Cordozo around, get her touches in certain ways while still um, being able to create great opportunities for their guard play, you know, for them, Pow Pow and, um, you know, Wiley. And, you know, it's just they I, we do have some similarities. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is how are, how are you going to double team, you know, and or are you going to go with single coverage? And so um, I think those are things that every team all year long is done a little bit differently and so I think we're getting pretty good at okay if they do it this way then we're gonna go about it this I think the most important thing is not losing track of Lauren it's not that Lauren has to shoot it um, but we are 13 percentage points better in our, our uh, shooting percentage when she touches it on the possession and so it's really important that we get her touches and and try to play through that um, and it really just creates things for other people as well Hey, Corey, Chantel Jennings with Hi, Hi, Chantel. Hi. Um, kind of a big picture question for you. With moving into the Big Ten next year, your guys' national TV schedule is going to look a lot different than it did in the Pac-12 with the Pac-12 networks and obviously the distribution issues there. How important is it for these teams to be on national platforms, not just for the growth of the game, but for particular players to sort of grow, you know, to have many stars within the game, to have those players on those Games. Well, the big advantage we have in the women's game, right, is that they stay for four years. And obviously in our current era, sometimes five, sometimes six, you know, depending on what we are dealing with according to the pandemic. But so there's a lot of levels to that, right? I do think it's really important for the growth of our game. But it's accentuated because people can develop relationships. I think that's why the interest level, not only do we have some great stars, but they have stayed and developed connections with the fan bases. People not only in their local vicinity, but also nationally have built this, um, you know, they're rooting for them. They're not just rooting for their performance on the court, but for their journey and for their growth and seeing their maturation. And, and that's sort of, we, we were really benefiting that we have some great growth trajectory for our game, we have some great stars, and it's sort of still the purity part. We don't have the one and dones, we don't have that. But the other side of that coin and the level that we're growing is it's also really important for um, having these young people be able to maximize their opportunities and entrepreneurs with name, image, and likeness. The more eyeballs on it, the more um, you know, TV revenue comes from media rights deals, the more that they're able to grow, the more valuable they are in brand ambassadorship kinds of opportunities. And so that's just a part of our business now. And so the, there's sort of a, um, I, you know, it's a good news. As I wouldn't even say it's a good news, bad news. It's a good news news, different news, because um, there are different things pulling on the agendas of the sport now. Um, but, you know, I think we can turn that into opportunity, especially for women. I've had more conversations with our women in the last two years about planning for their futures and investing and taxes and, you know, all the different things that I'm not just sure that we've culturally been brought up to think about in the same way, and we're having an opportunity to do so. But to answer your question, it's very important. I think national eyeballs on our sport is incredible incredibly important right now and it's incredibly important that corporations and media rights deals follow that trajectory. I'm Ben Pickman from The Athletic Inquiry. Hello there. Um, two questions kind of on approach. I guess for you personally, you've coached in a Sweet 16 game in Albany before, I, I guess have. just a couple of years ago. Is there anything you learned from that experience going west to east in terms of preparation, time zone adjustment that you can now apply here that you're changing up differently? And then for your team in particular, obviously that group has not uh, played right. in this Sweet 16 game in Albany, but from last year to this year, have you noticed any kind of change in approach, mindset, <clears throat> something like that in the lead up to this one? Well, I think that it's very different because last time we were here, we were a seven seed. We were we played at Maryland, so we stayed on the East Coast the entire time. So it was a very it was a very different situation. We actually um, we played four East Coast swings in a row in December, and uh, and so you know end of November and into December, and so we. But it was interesting because you have a lot more control of your travel, you know, and so we were 
two and a half hours late last night, so I've got some red eyes and those kinds of things. So, but I just think the reality is, is that I mean, we're playing in the Sweet 16. We got a chance to, um, you know, do amazing things, and so I'm not going to let two and a half hours, you know, get in that get in the way of that. So, I, I just think you know it's a reality, you know, and if you're focused on uh, things that are out of your control, as Coach Wooden would say, it will adversely affect the things that are under your control. So, um, you know, that's part of sports in life, and uh, the tougher, more together team wins, and I'm not going to let something like travel get in the way. I, I, th I do think that's a reality, and we really do try to plan strategically for how we travel, how we sleep, how we hydrate, all of those things. Um, we've even been doing studies leading up to our joining the Big Ten of what was going to be the right competitive travel schedule as we do take East Coast trips. So we are very strategic, but I also have to acknowledge that not everything's going to go the way you plan, and our job is to make the best of whatever we've got. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Sort of as a follow-up to that, I know you sure. hope to be in Portland uh, in this round. And Tara made comments yesterday that maybe it's time to reconsider the two regional format in one location. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that and felt that that should be reevaluated or if you like the way that it's played out. Well, I think we only this is only our second year, so I think it's too early to make those kinds of decisions. I, and I even it'll be interesting to ask Tara what she thinks about it after she didn't play in that piece last year and obviously Tara is you know, the best. And, uh, you know, so her definitely her opinion really matters and in, in how that she's experienced the growth of this game. So I would definitely listen to her comments. Um, but I just think in anything, uh, we have to see it play out a little bit and see, um, you know, what happens. So there's definitely you know, difficult pieces. Um, we happen to be in the same hotel as Oregon State, you know, and when you have so many teams going across the country, um, you know, how it affects fan bases and, you know, different things, I think over a little bit of time, um, we'll have to track that and be strategic about it. But I think it's too early to make a definitive, to have a definitive opinion. Last one. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Corey, can can you give a sense of where you think the conversation is about tournament units uh, for yeah. the women's tournament? Uh, it's got to happen. It's got to happen sooner rather than later. Um, if we're going to ride this wave of growth and trajectory, I, and I, I know that, um, you know, uh, President Baker has, you know, said he is committed, I think is the word he used, to integrating uh, units into our game. Um, but I think that if there's no, there's no teeth in all this growth, if that isn't coming back to the conferences and then to the universities. You have to, why, why would um, you know, a university president or an athletics director um, invest back in women um, at, to the same equitable amount that you're investing back in men when men get a unit share for this particular tournament and women don't? It's not that, um, I don't think it's intentional, I'm not crying that we're so disadvantaged, but I just think when the trajectory has gone, that if we really care about investing in the trajectory of where the business model is showing we should across all women's sports, not just women's basketball, it needs to happen immediately. Um, I, I just think we just signed a major deal with ESPN that obviously gives it more teeth without question. I wonder even now that um, when you look at how well the tournament is doing, how everything, the attendance is going up, that maybe that could be negotiated even quicker. But I think that corporate sponsorships need to be opened up to allow for even better unit distribution and um, financial implications for the NCA. We don't want to be a drain. We want to be an, an in increased asset for the NCA. We want to be um, something that's like, man, you need more um, alternative income sources. Well, we want to be that. And so it's not something we want to take away but add to to expand the pie. Thank you for your time this you morning, bet. Coach. Thank you all. You're a big part of growing our game, so thank you. We'll be joined by the student athletes in a few moments. Oh. 
Just a reminder, folks, all news conferences will be recorded here on site by our folks at Hammond Communications and are provided via the NCAA Digital Hub site. All the news conferences are provided via live stream. We are now joined by the UCLA student athletes, Charisma Osborne and Lauren Betts. Welcome to Albany, and we'll open up the questions.
Hi, Lauren and Charisma. Good to see you both. Uh, Lauren, question for you. You know, obviously you have a different game from Camilla Cardozo, but in both cases, you guys are players of size taking on Angel. And I'm wondering what you've seen out of the video, potentially of South Carolina, LSU, and you know what you kind of take into your strategy for that game. Yeah, um, I mean, watching that game, obviously, like it was super physical from the beginning, and I think that's the type of game that I'm gonna be walking into. But I think that's what we've been preparing for all week. Um, I think obviously Angel and I are gonna be really, yeah, aggressive inside. Um, I think just you know not falling into foul trouble, I think, is super important in this game, obviously, because you know Angel's gonna try to obviously go through me this game, and I think just making sure that I stay disciplined in my defense, um, just making sure I communicate with the guards on the screens, just being there to you know, rebound, not letting her get O boards, I think is super important. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. I don't know if you took a moment during the Pac-12 tournament to think this is the end of this conference, but the teams have had a lot of success, including you guys. Is it neat to see so many sort of friendly faces from the conference still around in the Sweet 16, including you guys, and obviously Colorado is here as well. Yeah, I think it's really cool um, to see a lot of Pac-12 teams still in the tournament. And I think that just shows how great the Pac-12 was all year round and how well we've prepared each other for this time of the year. Right here on the left. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, and I meant to identify Howard Magdal at the next. Um, Charisma, for you, you know, a major differentiator between these two teams uh, all year has been pace of play. And I'm just wondering two things. One, how important do you think it is to play at the pace you guys are uh, best playing at? And then just related to that, how you go about imposing pace early on. Like, what do you do to make sure it works that way, even in the early minutes of a game? Yeah, I think a lot of that has to do with how well we play defense and how well we rebound. Um, we're really good in transition, so if we're getting stops and rebounding, then we can really push the, pl the pace and play our game. So I think that'll be super important, and I think our team knows that. And we're really good at both of those things, so we just need to be ourselves and do that. Uh, Pete Doherty, Albany Times Union, for both players, can you talk a little bit about the travel to get here? I understand you had a little bit of an issue last night and got here late, and just trying to play with amounts to an early morning game for you on Saturday. Yeah, uh, we practice in the morning, so it's not that different, I would say, as far as playing. Um, but yeah, our playing got delayed a little bit, but that's no excuse for how we'll play tomorrow, and we'll be ready. Yeah, just a little adversity, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge for Lauren. Just uh, everyone speaks about Angel, uh, but Anissa does a lot of the dirty work down low as well. How yeah. much have you seen them and having to battle two bigs, even though Anissa may be a little undersized? Um, yeah, I mean, Anissa like another great post player. She's really talented, really physical. Um, I think, like I said before, pretty much same game plan. Um, obviously, she steps out in the perimeter a little bit more. So if, um, you know, uh, Angela and I get switched up ever, just making sure I pick her up early and find her and uh, yeah, just stay disciplined on defense I think is going to be the most important thing for me um, this game tomorrow, just making sure that I'm not fouling and um, yeah, I think that's going to be the most important thing. Back here. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, obviously, you guys are playing the defending national, ch reigning national champions, uh, but uh, don't like to use the word defending. But uh, uh, and you guys come from a place where there's a lot of famous people around. Uh, you live and play there, but uh, the fact that they are the reigning champions and there's there's a lot of notoriety with this team with commercials and magazine covers and things like that is it is it any does it add a different edge to it as compared to if you were playing somebody else I think there may be a little bit like more hype around the game because of that but um, we try not to really focus on that we're just focused on basketball and playing hard and doing what we do further questions yes right here I, just to piggyback off that, do you guys have personal relationships with anybody on LSU's team? Um, we both played with Angel this past summer on the America Cup team for USA Basketball, so um, obviously we know her from that. Um, but I, you know, obviously we don't get the time to hang out like <laughs> a lot. Of, you know, when we're out of when we're in season and everything, but we did have a really good time together this summer. This past summer so. And I played with Haley for USA Basketball 
like for U17s too. Does, ha does having that familiarity help in any way? Having seen them at practice, having kind of practiced alongside of them and played with them? Yeah, um, I mean, I just know what type of player Angel is, like super aggressive, really talented inside post player. Um, so yeah, I think I have an idea of what I'm walking into. Obviously, it's different when she's playing with like her teammates at LSU and that chemistry that she has with them, it's going to be a little different. But um, inside, I just, you know, I felt how physical she is before. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, down front here, first on the left. Hi, Patty, Rob with the Associated Press. Um, just kind of a associated question with the travel across. How much sleep did you guys get last night? Is there any kind of changes you would like to see for West Coast teams? I know they had teams in here at 6 a.m. doing shoot arounds, and you guys had to be here in what was like 4 a.m. your time. So is there anything you think they should do better for the West Coast teams that have to travel? <laughs> um, we didn't get that much sleep. Maybe like, I would say, I went to sleep at like, 12.45, we had to be up for breakfast by 7.45, so not that much sleep. Um, obviously, it helps that we have today to like, you know, sleep and get used to the time change, but I think our plane got delayed, like that's something that's just uncontrollable and we just have to adjust to that and like obviously no one purposely made that happen and if that didn't happen, we would have maybe gotten a little bit more sleep. Um, so I don't know if there's anything different because I think that was just it an accident like yeah, yeah it's not it like someone made it happen on purpose so yeah uh Doug Farmer with the AP for either one of you I'm curious from the player standpoint do you feel a growth in women's basketball fans attention do you do you see it that maybe from the inside of hey when I was younger this wasn't like this yeah I mean yeah I would say like there is a lot of hype around women's basketball right now and it's a really like I'm just really grateful to be a part of it. I think especially right now, I think it's, you know, with all of like the amazing basketball players that we have that are kind of just like taking over, it's really amazing to just see that. Um, yeah, I think like growing up, it's just, I don't think I ever saw women's college basketball, like, you know, in this light that, you know, it is in right now. And it's just, yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah, and I think one? even yeah. in Los Angeles, like the amount of people that have come out to our game and obviously mm -hmm. USC was hosting as well and there was big crowds for both games. So I think just the growth of the sport and seeing so many people who maybe you would think have, know nothing about women's basketball, like coming out to the games has been really cool to see. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge, kind of my same question, but uh, what, what is it like to play in the tournament and with all the stars and, um, you know, the feedback that you're getting now from people who maybe didn't watch women's basketball in the past? It's super cool. Like, I think it's so much fun playing in the tournament and like seeing people on commercials, even like watching other games. I think that's really cool. And it just continues to grow the game for women's basketball. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Charisma, you each made a specific decision to opt into this UCLA team. Charisma, you could have played in the WNBA. Uh, Lauren, you made the decision to come here. Have each of you thought about what the next couple of days can mean in terms of being able to take this team a place that it hasn't been in a very long time by some arguments ever? Lauren, you want to start that one? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, like, I think me and Charisma are just really, we're really bought into, like, the goals that this team has. And we're, we're you know, going to do anything we can to take this team where it wants to go. And obviously, like, you know, it's really easy to think about like what's ahead. And I think we're just really trying to take this tournament day by day and just really focus on what we need to do and stay really present. Um, I just think it's really easy to think about, you know, the future and what, you know, could happen with our team. But um, I just think like even today, just making sure that we focus in on our practice and what we need to get better at so that, you know, tomorrow we play the best game that we can. Yeah, just to add, like, that's what I came here to do. Like, I came back because I wanted to experience this, especially with this team. So, um, like Lauren said, we're just taking it day by day. And we'll go from there. Uh, for both players, again, uh, watching from afar, it seemed like every time you saw a, a score from the Pac-12, it's a, it's a ranked team playing a ranked <laughs> team, then you're playing another ranked yeah. team. How did your conference prepare you for, for this uh, in terms of – yeah, the toughness, the styles, the, the styles that you play, uh, do you feel like you're prepared for just about anything? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say obviously like it's the best conference. So every single game that we're walking into, it's got to be like the best scout. We have to be, you know, prepared to go in a top 10 matchup every single night. So um, I think it really has prepared us for, you know, this kind of tournament, these type of games. And um, I feel like specifically for like, you know, as a post, I feel like I'm playing against the best bigs in the country every single game. Um, and so I feel like it's honestly just made me better and I've had to grow um, each single practice like I can't really settle with what I've been doing I have to learn from each game and figure out what I need to do so you know in the tournament like this um, I just bring something different so all set here last one uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com for both players and charisma if you want to start just the experience of being in the sweet 16 last year what kinds of lessons did you learn going through that that maybe can help or apply this time around to make things a little bit different? Yeah, I think um, just sticking to who we are. I think last year when we played, um, it was like the first time a lot of us had played in the Sweet 16. And I played in it during COVID, so that was even like really different for me. But um, I think just going into this game, like our experience will help us out so much and just remembering who we are and doing the things that we know to do consistently. Thank you to the student athletes. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Next up will be LSU at 955.